Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis using the Zelle app to box13 at greatdetectives.net. And you can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of The Man Called X, the original air date, March the 4th, 1952, and the title is Alaska Weather Station. Listen to Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, adventure, intrigue, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world... There you will find The Man Called X. The dock area of Yokohama, Japan, looks to be in a normal state of bustle and confusion. But there is nothing normal-looking about the man crouching like a hunted animal behind a pile of packing cases. And then they fix on a jaunty-looking figure approaching the hiding place. And with a move born of sudden desperation, the man leaves his concealment and runs out onto the dock. Zellschmidt? Your pig on Zellschmidt, aren't you? Your pig on Zellschmidt? And uh, whom wants to know? I, I know you are. I saw you once in Washington with a man named Ken Thurston. Where is he? You must take me to him at once. Do you hear? Take me to Ken Thurston at once. Oh, oh sure, sure. Please. Be glad to, will Right now, i got a Please. heavy date with No, I... no. Hmm? No, listen to me. You can't leave me now. Ken Thurston, I have to see Ken Thurston at once. Oh, Thurston. Thurston. I must see. Oh. Ah. Bundy's right there, Mr. Thurston, in the morgue. Thanks, Doctor. You haven't been able to identify him? No, no papers, wallet, laundry marks, nothing. I see. Well, Mr. Thurston, do you know him? No, no, I don't. Never saw him before in my life. Makes it even more strange, doesn't it? This insistence of his upon seeing you? In his scars, broken bones, physical characteristics that might help us? Only that scar tissue on his legs and feet. Frostbite? Yes. Another recent, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I did notice some peculiar calluses on the thumb and little finger of his left hand. Here. You can see them quite plainly. Yes. All right, Doctor, thanks. Anything else we can do for you? I'd like to use a private office of your mind. One with the telephone. Of course. Do you want to call the authorities in Tokyo? No, the Bureau, New York. Okay, Ken. I've got the file right here. But what connection Professor James Abbott could have with the murdered derelict there in Japan, I don't know. Oh, let's see if we can find out, Chief. Professor Abbott was working on robot weather stations in Alaska, wasn't he? That's right. Establishing a string of stations throughout the Arctic. All self-operating, not requiring any maintenance personnel. Wasn't there some connection between those weather stations and our radar defense system up there? Right. Abbott was trying to see if he could use the same robot system on our radar detection stations. If he could, it would make our aircraft warning defenses so airtight that... Uh... Oh, but this is the Arctic we're talking about, not Japan. Professor Abbott's missing, isn't he? Sure, has been for a couple of months. All efforts to contact him have been... Wait a minute. You don't think this dead man could possibly be Abbott? He had recent frostbite scars on his legs, Chief. And how many people do you know who play the French horn? The French horn? Yes. Wasn't Abbott a well-known amateur musician? A French horn player? Well, sure. But what's that got to do with it? 
The dead man had well-developed calluses on the thumb and little finger of his left hand. The kind musicians get. Those who play the French horn. And there were two Russian freighters in the harbor, Chief. Well, adds up to quite a few items, doesn't it, Ken? Yes. I think I'd better check on them in Alaska. There isn't much information we can give you about Professor Abbott here, Mr. Thurston. He was working out of the Elmdorf Air Base, wasn't he, Colonel? That's true, but as far as his work was concerned, well, it was top secret. When did you last hear from him? I see. It must have been a little over two months ago. He'd informed us by short wave that he was heading for a new robot weather station up the Naruka River, intended to winter there alone. And no word since? None. We sent out a number of searching parties, didn't find a trace of them. I see. How can I get to the Naruka station? Well, the only feasible method this time of year is to fly in. I can tell you right now, you won't find anything there, but we'll put a plane at your disposal. I think I'd better make this unofficial, Colonel. What about bush pilots? Well, there's Chuck Stevens. He covers that territory all the time. As a matter of fact, I believe he was the one who flew Abbott in that last time. Chuck Stevens? Yes, you'll find his plane at the Anchorage field. I'll have someone drive you out. Well, thanks just the same, Colonel, but I just got a nasty hunch it won't be necessary. What? Hello, Mr. Thurston. Welcome to Alaska. Hey, going I'll be hanged if I'm going to ask you what you're doing here. That's right, Mr. Thurston. So hop into this jalopy and I'll drive you to that Chuck Stevens pilot. <laughs> He's going to fly us out to the Maruka weather station. That's right, Mr. X. I knew you made a big mistake giving me the brush up in Yokohama. So I got the next plane out of, for Alaska. You mean you stowed away? Yes. No, no. Anyways, uh, here we are. The Zellschmidt Stevens Air Taxi Cab Service and Company. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Hello there. You must be first. That's right. You, Stevens? You named it. Your friend Zellschmidt has been spreading the word around Anchorage that you're trying to get some dope about a Professor James Abbott. Thank you, Pedro. Don't think nothing good, Mr. Thurston. That's why I asked him to bring you here. Figured I, uh, I might be able to help you. Might be nice of you, Stevens. What do you know about him? Why, I flew him up to a weather station on the Naruka River a couple of months ago. It's a pretty lonely spot. You'd be glad to have company. I guess you haven't heard. Professor Abbott is missing. Missing? That's right. Has been for two months. How come you didn't know? Well, that's simple. I flew over that weather station day before yesterday. And Professor Abbott was still there. the Naruka weather station dead ahead. <laughs> Boy, what a lonely hunk of a place. Nothing but snow and ice and snow. Yeah. You sure you saw Abbott there, Stevens? Well, I couldn't miss. We made arrangements for me to check with him any time I flew near. So I buzzed the place twice. He came out and waved me off. He wouldn't have done that if he was in any kind of trouble. Oh, you better keep those belts tight. There's just a couple of inches of new snow over some pretty rugged ice down there. The landing's liable to be rough. Yep. does it, gents. Now let's go in and say hello to the professor. Notice anything strange, Stevens? Strange? Like what? Well, the professor doesn't seem too anxious to meet any guests. Hey, that's right. I wonder how come he's sticking inside. Suppose we go in and ask him. Hey, it's, it's a quiet out here and... And quiet, like like there was something wrong or something. We'll find out in a minute. See, 
Nobody home. Hey, maybe he's getting a short beer or something. Oh, sure. Come on. Nobody's home inside either. I don't get it, Thurston. There weren't any tracks in the snow leading away from here. Abbott's got to be around somewhere. You're right. Yeah. Hey. Well. She's got a gun. She's got a gun. Hey, what's the big idea? Stay put, mister. I know how to use this thing. I think she does it that, Stevens. Yeah. Okay. What are you doing here? We might ask you the same question. You might. Only I've got the gun. So what are you doing here? Suppose I said we wanted to talk to uh, Professor Abbott. And I'd say you're out of luck, mister. Why? I just killed him. We'll return to the man called X in just a moment. Today, throughout the nation, driving conditions remain precarious. Longer hours of darkness, poor visibility caused by ice, snow, rain and fog, and slippery streets call for extra precaution when you drive. Adjust your speed to road and weather conditions. Keep windshield clear of rain, snow, ice and fog. Never slam on your brakes if the road is wet or slippery. Guard against that one accident that might take your life or ruin it. For your own sake, be careful. And now, act two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. An unidentified man is murdered in Yokohama, Japan, and Ken Thurston believes him to be Professor Abbott, a missing meteorologist who had been working on top-secret weather and radar stations in Alaska. But when they arrive at the Naruka weather station, they're met by a girl. A girl who greets them with a gun in her hand and a startling statement. You heard me. You're too late to speak to the professor. I just killed him. Very interesting. Mind telling us why? Anna Cola don't cotton to claim jumpers, mister. Claim jumpers? That's right. I staked out a uranium load back in the foothills. Abbott wrecked my claim markers and put his up. Tracked him down here and I managed to get my gun first. Any questions? Yes. Where's the body, Miss uh, Cola? The next room. Thanks. Boy, he's better than a macro. Yeah. You know, Miss Cola, that yarn of yours is pretty fishy. You can check the claim stakes for yourself, mister. And if you look close at Abbott there, you can see he's got his gun half drawn. She's right, Mr. Thurston. That's not what Stevens is talking about. Oh? Then what is he talking about? The dead man. He's not Abbott. Hmm? That's right. He's Ivan Vasilov. Runs a coastal trading schooner out of Anchorage. All I know is that he was trying to run a con game on me, and it didn't pay off. This the man you saw from your plane a couple of days ago, Stevens? Well, those are the clothes he was wearing. I guess I just took it for granted he was Abbott. I, um, I'm sorry for the bum steer, Thurston. <laughs> so who cares who he was? He's dead. And this dame done it to him. Well, why don't you do something about her, Mr. Thurston? Sure. Go ahead. Oh, put that thing away, Miss Kohler. The authorities in Anchorage will handle this killing business if and when we ever get back there. What do you mean, Thurston? Well, take a look outside. Outside? Hey, it's a raging a blizzard outside. It's a howl, all right. Looks like we'll be snowed in here for a while. Snowed in? With the dead men and the gun, Molly? Ooh. Oh, Ooh. cheer up, Pagan. While we're here, maybe we'll get a couple of questions answered. What kind of questions, Thurston? What happened to Professor Abbott? And why? I don't get it, Mr. X. Why do you want to monkey around with all that junk and stuff? What's here in this weather tower that can tell you anything? It's not what's here, Pagan. It's what's missing. Huh? What's missing? Abbott's top secret. The heart of the equipment. The robot brain. So it's missing, so what? So now we know why the professor's missing, too. It's over this next little hill, Thurston. 
I spotted it this morning while snooping around for that uranium claim of Anacola's. What about that claim, Stevens? Well, I didn't find a trace of it. But there. That's what I did find. Ah. The remodeled Russian Yak fighter play. Sure. Made over into a nice three-place cabin job. That dead man Vasilov must have flaunted in here. Why not uh, Anacola? No, no. She came overland in a snow track. I saw it. So, uh, what do you think, Thurston? About what? Oh, now, look, I'm no idiot. Abbott was working on something up here, and it was must have been something big, maybe top secret. So? So maybe he didn't disappear because he wanted to. Maybe somebody was after him for that top secret. Maybe Anacola or Vasilov. Or both. You're coming up with a lot of theories, Stevens. What about proof? <laughs> I got a hunch that's your job, Thurston. But I'd sure like to know what's going on in Anacola's mind. Pagan, really? After all, what kind of a girl must you think I am? Oh, come on, baby. <laughs> Move over a little closer. After all, it's it's cold outside. <laughs> oh, <hey again. laughs> oh, can I help it if I am so impetuous? Oh, come on, baby. Oh, but after all, we hardly know each other. Oh, so who cares? When you and me could make such beautiful music together... What say we start tuning up, eh, maybe? Hey, <laughs> uh, Mr. Thurston might be back any minute. What would he think? Oh, what difference does it make what he thinks? After all, he takes his orders from me. Does he really? Oh, sure, sure. So come into Papa's arms. Uh, we got things to talk about. Real interesting things. <laughs> but I think you're so interesting, Peggy. Hmm? Doing such dangerous and exciting work. Oh. We're working for the government and everything. Uh, g- government? Who said that? Why, Mr. Thurston did. He did? Well, of course. He told me all about the two of you. He told me everything. Everything? That's right. How do you like that? He makes me promise not to tell anybody that he's the man called X, and then he goes around to do... (gasps) Thank you, Pagan. Huh? (laughs) For for, for what? For being so sweet and talkative. Hmm? I just got to give you something in return. You do, baby? (laughs) Like what? Like... Ah, it looks like we're beating our feet for nothing, Thurston. If Anacola did stake out a uranium load around here, the storm's covered it. Yeah. Might as well head back for the weather station. Storm's died down enough now for us to... Hey, what's the matter? Listen. Holy smoke, my plane. First... Yeah, Anacola. There it is, Thurston. Starting the taxi. Yeah. It's Anacola, all right. But look at it. Heading right toward us. Jump, Stevens. Quick. How do you like that? The seal off wasn't enough for her. She tried to get us, too. And she's left us stranded out here. Not quite. There's still Vasilov's plane. Come on. Let's get back to Anchorage. Hey, I don't get it, Mr. X. Why all this rushing around Anchorage this way? I've got a little work to do. But you've already done some work. Calling that colonel at the air base and finding out that Kohler cookie filed a uranium claim with that land recorder. And and what are you looking for down here at the docks, anyway? I just found it, Pega. Huh? You found what? You found Vasilov's trading ship. But that Vasilov's character is dead. Who's going to be on board now? 
Suppose you get yourself a short beer while I find out. <laughs> That's the first thing I've heard in Alaska that makes any sense. See you later, Mr. Burke. Welcome aboard, Mr. Thurston. Well, who are you? I merely happen to be the dead man you found at the Naruka weather station. Ivan Vasilov. So, Mr. Thurston, have you figured it out yet? About Professor Abbott, I mean. It wasn't too tough, Vasilov. You wanted the secret of that robot mechanism. So you kidnapped Abbott. Only he escaped in Yokohama and was shot for his trouble. True, quite true, Mr. Thurston. And is that all? Not quite. With Abbott gone, you needed the mechanism itself. So you had to send for an expert. He was the man Anna shot, Naruka. Yes, the poor girl really believed that you were all after uranium. But that does not matter now. What does? The fact that we shall leave Anchorage shortly to rendezvous with a submarine in the Gulf of Alaska. It already has the robot mechanism aboard. What your fate shall be from then on, I, I leave to your imagination. I see. Stand back, everybody. Hey, gone. Don't you worry about the thing, Mr. Thurston. We've come to the rescue. Should the first pirate that moves, Mr. Stevens, we'll make them walk the plank afterwards. How'd you ever dream this one up, you idiot? Ha, that's cracked for you. I meet Mr. Stevens on the docks. We see you bump into this character in the cabin. I risk my life to come on board and save you from worse than death. And then you call me an idiot. Don't take my word for it. Ask Stevens. Stevens? How could you know how big an idiot I am? Because he's the man we've been looking for. The brains of the outfit that killed Abbott. He, he is? Who? Who? All right, Ivan. Give me the gun. You get the ship on the way. Of course, comrade. We will be started. Sure. So, Thurston. You had me figured, too. Hmm? That's right. You knew too much about the landing field conditions at Naruka. That meant you'd been there recently. You identified the dead man as Vasilov when his papers said differently. It all added up to something, Stevens. Now you know what? A one-way trip to you and the radar equipment. But what about me, Mr. Stevens? I, I, I didn't figure out nothing. Hmm. Come to think of it, Zeltschmidt, that's right. Sure, sure it is. So I guess I, I just uh, take myself a mosey onto the dock. Hey, eh, Mr. Stevens? Why don't I save you the trouble, Zeltschmidt, hmm. by shooting you now? Oh, that's the ticket. Save me the trouble by shooting me now. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> What's the trouble? What's going on out there? I say that Colonel Bishop's men are taking over. Colonel? That's right. I tipped them off that I might run into trouble here. All right, drop the gun, Stevens. All right, drop it. Okay. Okay. Everything all right, Thurston? Yes, thanks, Colonel. Now, what about this man here? Ooh, I'm dying, I'm dying. Oh, get up, Hagan. It's all over. It is. Hey, how do you like that? It is. They're getting something, aren't you, Thurston? That submarine with a robot mechanism aboard? <laughs> We're still one. Oh, that. I imagine we'll get a report from the bombing squadron shortly. Bombing squadron? Yeah. The colonel sent one up over the gulf after I called him. Death bomb practice. Death bomb? What? You can't do that. What about international law? International law. Since when did your kind pay any attention to law? What law gives you the right to kidnap, to murder, and start wars? But don't worry about it, Stevens. Those bombers are practicing in the Gulf of Alaska. They won't hurt anything that doesn't belong there. And I'm sure one of your subs wouldn't violate our territorial waters. Or would it? <laughs> And now, here again is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Gene Tatum, Will Wright, John Dana, Lou Merrill, and Peter Leeds. Next week, Lisbon, Portugal, where Ken uncovers a plan to kill the North Atlantic Pact, a dumb waiter who isn't so dumb, and a man who dies four times. And let me assure you, the latter is not Leon Velasco, who'll be along, of course, as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return... As the man called X, good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. 
Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. This program is directed by Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. And now, until next week, same time and station, this is Hal Gibney saying good night for The Man Called X. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Welcome back. Well, a lot of cases of people being presumed dead, but not dead. And uh, next week, we're going to get somebody who dies four times. It's becoming a bit of a recurring theme. It was an interesting conversation at the end between Thurston and the villain. And some real frustration with the idea that everything that uh, the U.S. Uh, does has to be according to Hoyle, while international spies get away with, well, literally murder in this case. Though, I guess Ken came up with a pretty good loophole to wiggle out of any problems. I loved Ken stating that he would not ask Pagon how he got there, and then the next scene we have Pagon explaining how he got there. Uh, but, of course, the best part of this episode for Pagon, or perhaps the worst, depending on how you look at it, I have no idea if there's, like, an international competition for cheesiest pickup lines ever. But if there is, I think Pagon's definitely was in the running with, we could make beautiful music together. Let's tune up. I think that line speaks for itself, but in all the wrong ways. All right, well, now I want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Larry, Patreon supporter since September 2015, currently supporting us at the Master Detective level of $15 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for your support, Larry. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast, please rate and review it wherever you're downloading your podcast from. We'll be back next Wednesday with another episode of The Man Called X. But we'll be back tomorrow with a Philo Vance murder case where... I'm thinking about... About Richard West? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not very complimentary, is it, darling? Thinking about him when you're with me? I hate him, Bob. Oh, no. Too much venom, Gene. It'd be more convincing if you weren't making such a definite effort. Matter of fact, I hate him, too. Not like I do. Why not? He promised you a part in the play he's in. He didn't deliver. I had the part he's playing now until he stepped in. Same reason. <laughs> Say, Gene, you know who's casting? Who? George McCready. Let's you and I go over to his office now, huh? Oh, I don't feel like it. Oh, you'd better feel like it before words gets around this soda fountain that McCready is listening to readings. Did you ever see so many actors and actresses out of work in your life? That includes us, you know. Not if we get over to McCready's in time. You know how word flies around in this place. <laughs> in two minutes, the whole mob of them would be flooding McCready's office if they knew. Oh, forget McCready for now, will you, Bob? All right, for you, I'll forget it for now. Bob, what would you say if... I told you that Richard West hurt me, hurt me more than I can tell even you. Bob, I hate that man so much I won't rest while he's alive. You claim you love me. You've said there isn't anything you wouldn't do for me. Well, honey, you, you know how fellas say things like that. You meant it, Bob. I know you meant it. Look what Richard West has done to you. He took that stage job because he knew you were first in line for it. Knew that a young actor could be a star in that part. That was a honey of a part I... Could have played the heck out of it, too. Sure you could. You could have been great. The notices would have been all for you. It would have made you, Bob. And just because West knew I liked you, he took the role. He killed you professionally, Bob. Don't you realize that? He killed me professionally. Yeah, I guess he did. Maybe that gives me an idea of what I've got to do to him. 
I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. And don't forget our Instagram, instagram.com slash Great Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.